So next question. Um, have you ever felt the gender bias during the journey and how did you cope with it? Uh, let's start with uh, Vanessa. Do you think being a female founder, you feel that there are some benefits? I don't know, maybe like from being able to multitask or what, whatever. It lets me talk to be the person. Um, I think I might sound, uh, for the most part, why is she so negative? But is there a benefit? No, not at all. I think uh, uh, the cards are not stacked for you. It's mainly stacked against you. Uh, and for many reasons, and it's not because, you know, the guys around you are terrible. It's just because the system in general, uh, over time, have created a condition in which they put a lot of pressure on you. So, for example, uh, I out earn my husband three to one. My husband works in an office with no child care. I don't have kids right now for a good reason. So what do we do? Like, if we have a child like where's that kid gonna go people go you're doing it you're the mother how could you be a bad mother you must love your kid love your kid more than anything else in the world like right so then we'll lose our income the very like large amount that actually comes from me so i'm at a very like uh, good position right which is actually why fundraising is fun for me because i'm super privileged in the sense that I have great education. I'm from University of Chicago, Wharton. If anything goes wrong, yeah, I'm very privileged. I can probably get a job in like a private equity. But that's not the reality for everyone else. Um, in terms of uh, playing the minority part, um, has yet to never work uh, simply because uh, for a lot of funds and a lot of uh, systems, uh, saying that you invest into women is mostly like to talk on Instagram. It's not actually to execute. There have been a ton of female like funds that I've seen, like ever, and they would go on for twelve months, not investing into a single female. Going, yeah, yeah, but uh, no, like the growth strategy. I, I don't know. You can argue it any which way. Bias now is not by saying like, oh, you're a woman, you're you're weak. No, it's very it's very micro. It's called microaggression, actually. Um, it's very little, very small. It's like a thousand paper cuts. And if you're looking at even minority funds, SoftBank, we created a hundred million dollar fund for minorities. Seriously? Like one guy who like stole everyone's money went with six billion. Why only a hundred million? Like, where's what's that? Um, so, I mean, I think we really need to start rather than patting ourselves on the back for being equal people. Why don't you just accept that you're probably not doing that great of a job? Me included, by the way. I'm just gonna call myself out. I don't have a great, uh, I don't have a great uh, company that has people with disability. That's bad. Why? Why am I not uh, offering places for a diverse group of people? So I think rather than patting yourself in the back to say you support people, supporting is what you're supposed to do. Period. So, I think if we just take more responsibility, then probably we can get better. But, yeah, I don't think so far there's been any benefit whatsoever, including when I apply for female fund. Okay. But, I mean, like, what if there's this aspiring female founders young, young, that out there that they want to wanna start something? How would you advice you know like like to approach this entrepreneurship um i think your life is going to suck so you should just get ready for it but i'll tell you this uh i'm glad i was born a woman because life has been really fun uh personally i'm a person who likes crisis um so that's a good thing uh, if I weren't rejected, like, I don't know, 145 times, some crazy number or something just from this one company, um, I probably wouldn't be having this much fun, having this much data on things, learning this much. So 
I'm actually glad that we're not the kind of company that raised like $5 million ideation stage. Could we be different? Sure, maybe. I don't know, actually. Uh, but this whole entire thing actually teaches you a different lens. And I think that's the thing. Just keep asking yourself, the 10 closest people next to you, who are they? Are they people kind of like you? Or are they, some of them are like different? Because you probably need that difference. Um, as a female founder, I will say uh, the same thing I say to every other founder. Don't start your business uh, until you really devil's advocate the hell out of yourself. Um, and for women itself, just get, get ready to experience some crazy shit. But that's okay too. These things happen. Um, so just take everything as a learning process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. So Vanessa, how about you? I mean, do you have the same view or different kind of benefits from being a female founders? Um, I think I I would say I mean I, I agree to to a certain extent to what Tika said, especially we do live in a society where um, once you have a family. Certain things are, um, are 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 given our responsibilities, right? As as a as a mother, as as, as a wife, um, and if things if things go 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 crazy with my kids, for example, right? It's gonna be me who will be blamed, and not, not my husband, unfortunately, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if if the if the male or if the if the father works twenty four seven, like you know, running running multiple businesses, not being there for, for the kids, um, for the family, but the mom, the wife, has to be there. And of course, we live in a in a in an era where women also have a, a big aspirations. We we want we want to chase our dreams. We want to. We want to be able to, to have it all, right? And and I feel like, you know, we can have it all as long as we know what is it that we really want, right? All is, all cannot mean all for us. Again, I think for all of uh, you guys who are aspired to be entrepreneurs, I strongly suggest not to do it because everyone is doing it. And um, so that you have a CEO or a co-founder title on your card because you think it's cool because starting start, starting things is so easy but continuing it is hard as shit, right? <laughs> Sorry my language. And it's not cool when you just give up in the middle of, of, of things because you you don't have what it takes. You really have to understand what it takes to be a founder, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And I'm still learning. You know, my parents also are entrepreneurs. My uh, grandparents, they were immigrants, and they came to Indonesia. Buka toko kelontong, buka jadi, you know, they're, they're, they're entrepreneurs in their own ways. Uh, they, they didn't work as a professional. They, they, they did not have a career path in some corporates. So that's their definition of entrepreneur. So I'm a third generation of entrepreneur uh, now. Um, and my parents are in their 70s. They are still running their business. I mean, their their uh, business have been um, running since for, for for almost 40 years. And I see how how difficult it is, right, to to really um, grow something from nothing uh, and continue to have that same passion as the day when you started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, being, that's a what I've experienced. Uh, be, being a mother and entrepreneur, do you see the difference between being a mother as a professional or being a mother as an entrepreneur? Do you see the difference? Well, I have never been a, 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 a professional uh, since I became a mother. I think, I, uh, you know, of course, and, and I, do, I do hire mothers. I mean, I, I have a lot of mothers in, in at GoWork as well. And I see how they have to juggle, right? As an entrepreneur, somewhat, we, we do have the flexibility. If my, if my son is sick and I have to take them to the doctor, 
I can drop everything and just take a doctor, right? As a professional, it's probably not that easy. Of course, di Indonesia juga lebih gampang karena banyak 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 bantuan kan. It's a lot more help here compared to if we live in the US or if we live in Europe. I mean, I I I have friends who 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 are not born stay home mom. I mean, they really want to work, but the fact that they have to work means that they have to pay someone who who might make more than what they what they earn, right? And it's painful. It's very painful, but it is for their their self fulfillment fulfillment, right? They're not working for money, it's they're working for their sanity type of thing. So I think as the professional, yes, it's tough. Um, it's we, we can look at it well, we can look at it both ways. But uh, I think I'm the type of person who 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 always try to find solution for for certain things. I mean, there's we can always complain and and uh, have grudge against something, but there's always I mean, you can always make it work, right? Whether you're a professional or you're an entrepreneur, if that is what you want, if you are a mother and you want to start a business and you feel very strongly about that, you should do it because there's always a way for for you to make things work. But when you started, you already have, when you started doing work by then, you already have kids, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I started when my second son was only nine months old. Was it tough? Nine months, right? So that was like still, I would say. So I have a three-year-old daughter, so I, I know that nine months, nine months is still early, right? Yeah. Uh, was it tough, I mean, to start? Yeah. I cried many nights. <laughs> That's one benefit of being a female founder. We can cry whenever we want. <laughs> thank you, I mean, thank you for being honest. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I think, of course. yeah, I mean, I think it, it's, it's important, right, to know that it's not just for the glory of, oh, I'm a founder, but mm -hmm. there, there, there's that, you know, sad part as well. There are, mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, I'm, do what, why we did the, why we do this founders journey is because like sometimes it's lonely right and and we cannot express this to some of our employees but it's more of a mm -hmm. we have to burden that we have, we, we have to carry right so mm -hmm. i think it's good that you mentioned that you cried yeah yeah and family support system is extremely extremely important uh, i mm -hmm. i mean i felt guilty many times Right. Um, of course, from Uga, Uga, I was a solo founder for two years, so I felt how it's like to do anything and everything because um, things just have to work. And the sad part is, the more I do, the more I realize that I need to do more. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's very true. Uh, and again, that is when I started to, to, to look for for opportunities to for a strategic partnership. Di 2017, kita sempat. I mean, I, I knew all the players in the in, in the in the industry. I started talking to some of them. We have good chemistry with the board founders, co-founders back then. Ngobrol-ngobrol sih nggak nggak ngomongin mengenai merger atau atau gak sama sekali nggak ke situ gitu kita ngomongin eh gimana ya gimana bisnis gimana uh, what what is your vision what is what is your aspiration with this terus ya kita merasa cocok aja gitu kita merasa cocok jadi kita mulai ngomongin kerjasamanya gimana ya nggak hanya yang superficial superficial aja gitu uh, oke okay, your member can come to my place my member can go, can go to your place type of thing because that's like okay everybody's doing it and uh, honestly speaking, like how many percent, like what is the percentage of people doing that, right? Maybe now there are more. Jadi lebih ke arah, oke, okay, uh, kita ngeliat dari founders-foundersnya, kita semua backgroundnya beda, we, are for, we have complementary skills, we have complementary network, so we talk big, like we talk to do something bigger, and that's uh, why we did the MMA, I mean the merger. Yeah, so I, I think that's, that's also like a good point as well, I guess, right? Because sometimes when you want to start something, oh, I want to start something maybe like by myself. 
because like um, that's the ego part, right? But but, but then we see that the with actually during crisis, having that support system, having that co-founders who can sh maybe like share something to you and also you share something to them is also important, right? And and, and that's why I think uh, even as a, as an investor, we always see that. We want the team to be solid, right? To have that strong team and strong co-founding team, and and I think the the rate of success is much higher when you have that that support system. Thank you, thank you, Vanessa, for sharing. Next question uh, is related to the pandemic. So when COVID, uh, the pandemic of uh, COVID nineteen breakout happened, what was the first thing or Two that came up to your mind, uh, considering both of your startups have strong offline presence. 